Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, I'd like to continue with our discussion about mobilizing chi and the different steps that uh, are required to make that happen and a way to optimize the mobilization and um, picking up from the last week's topic that of finding the the still point like in the pendulum and the pendulum moves if you just focus on the movement looks like continuous movement but there actually are points there where the pendulum turns around and in that moment even though it lasts zero time there is you're moving from you're slowing down to zero movement so it, but in that movement in that moment there is maximum energy potential. And a similar thing is occurring in a, let's say in a Tai Chi form, where you're moving from yin to yang or yang to yin. There's a turnaround there. And when that happens in that moment, even though it looks like the movement is continuous, in that turnaround, there is a moment of stillness, even if it lasts zero time. So that in, if we can, when in our practice, we can learn to identify those still points and hover there for a non-zero time, we can then activate the mobilization. We do it by holding poles in opposition in that, in that, in that point. So we're we're focusing and we're like getting into those those quiet spots and whenever you get really familiar with those turnarounds get really familiar with those still points and you learn to suck the nectar out of them you're able then to even at a much higher speed you're able to activate the mobilization. So then whenever you enter into that, that still point, there's a, things get a little woo woo and that's kind of fun. So uh, the one way of, um, that I've found of really recognizing this is by identifying what, they, what are the yin movements and what are the yang movements in a Tai Chi form? It doesn't have to be Tai Chi, it can be a Qigong form um, or no form. Any kind of movement where you are becoming very mindful of the movement and the stillness and the feeling, you actually tap into the feeling of those, of those states. When you do that, then you shift your state of awareness into a super conscious state and you're able to then tap into something much bigger something much greater than that which can be generated by your muscles and this is you know we're getting in the realm of jinn now and by exploring the jinn we then move into the spiritual side of Taiji Chuan. So the, um, I gave it some thought this week and like, since every movement has yin and yang in it, so there's nothing where it's ever purely yin or purely yang. You know, I may be in the yin part of the movement, but my arms may be doing a yang expression. I may be like doing my roll back, my hands are doing a yin type movement, they're down and in, but it's a young expression. So what is the key to what makes it yin and what makes it young, particularly as applied to a Taiji form? And I came up with something, which I guess, you know, I've been doing, but I hadn't really thought about. And that is the qua. Whenever the, we release the qua, that is a yin point in, 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 a, in a posture. 
whenever we turn the waste. So we have these two separate qualities there. If we release the qual, we're moving into a yin state. And when we turn the waste, then it is a yang expression. So if we think of it in those terms, something very interesting happens. Let's just say, let's say I'm, I'm gonna keep my weight in my front leg and I'm going to execute a punch. So as I, I'm gonna spiral down to the right. So I'm releasing the left claw, spiraling down to the right, loading up my front leg. And this is a yin activity. I'm settling into the posture. And at that point, so where I, I go from, from a yang to then there's a moment of recognition of, oh, I want to get yin now. And so I release the claw. But between that yang expression and the yin loading, there is a moment, a moment of stillness. And that's where, so then I load up with the yin chi and I wait here and recognize that still point of the loading. And this is where I'm drawing the bowstring back. Even though my body is, is relaxed, I'm just sort of settling down in, I'm gathering, mobilizing the chi. What happens now? Then I say, okay, we're going from yin to yang. We're going from the still point to movement. And then I reach out with my hand, yang. So what happens there? I'm turning my waist and the turn of the waist allows for a yang expression. So let's, uh, first of all, let me just ask if, uh, if that, that is clear to everybody that uh, we'll, we'll get a chance to do, do it in, the, in, a, in a second here. Is that, is that all clear to everybody? Okay, so it's a way of distinguishing and all the yins, you know, all the yins and yangs going on there, there is a, there is a, a definite transition there where you are loading for the punch you're drawing the bowstring back. That is a yin point. Okay, so let's uh, let's just play with that for a second, and then we're going to do some more fun stuff with that. So put your uh, put your left leg forward. You're going to use your right your right hand. And let's make it interesting here. Let's start with your your hand on your fist. And we're gonna just be using the right leg. So pick up your, your back or your left leg. You pick up your, your right heel. So you're just gonna be, you're gonna be using, strictly using the qua on the, on the right side, on the left side, I'm sorry. So here we go. So we, we, we're in this expression posture. This is a yang posture. So we want to go from yang to yin. So we recognize that transition and feel into that stillness. And just notice that by just by creating that space, we are mobilizing chi. It's not the punching chi, it's the yin chi of, lo of loading. And we feel the ball of the right, the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the right. And as we do that, we separate the right fist from the left hand. And we spiral down and load up that front leg, the left leg. So there's now we're pulling back. You can even imagine pulling back on a bowstring here. As the right fist comes back, the left hand is reaching forward. and feel the still point here, feel the loading. And now we turn the waist and bring back the fist back. 
and make contact with the, with the left hand. Let's do that again. Feel the still point. And left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, releasing down into the quad. So you're getting yin. The left hand reaches out. The right hand is pulling back. So we got some separation there that, that those two pulling apart are creating energy. Feel into the still point here. And then turn the waist and reach out with the left, the right hand and make contact. And feel into the still point here now. Yeah, let's do it on the other side. Put your right foot forward. Pick up your left heel. So you're using your left fist in your right hand. Okay, feel into that still point. Feel the potentiality there. And feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. As you do that, you're pulling back with the left fist. Even though the, the fist is not, hasn't changed in its relationship to your torso, you haven't used your shoulder muscles at all. All you've done is turn your body. You spiral down and release down into it. You wanna feel into that still point. Feel the two hands in opposition and then turn the waist and reach out with your left hand. Again, so feel the potentiality, feel the still point. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, pull back. You can feel the opposition between the hands. Feel the still point. And turn. Turn the waist. Reach out. And just feel into that. Feel into the energy of that completed action. Good. Okay, grab a seat. Okay, how'd that go? Good, good. Right. So, yes. Yes, the uh, uh, question is, uh, I'm not sure I'm feeling this still point, but yet when I do it, uh, there is a lot of chi. So it seems to be working. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm missing uh, the uh, still point. Did your body point? stop? Yeah, it stopped. Did you hold those two poles in opposition? Oh, definitely. That's where I felt That was still, it. right? Yeah. Well, I, maybe I can't define the uh, uh, feeling, but it seems like with, that, with the poles in opposition, you feel a lot of stuff there. Well, you know, that's, that's, that's what I'm talking about, Stan. So you, oh, you know, yeah. what, what you did was exactly what, uh, what, what we want, wanted to happen there. It's a very mm -hmm. simple thing. And I put it in really simple terms here yes. so that you can apply it to anything. Mm. Okay. So it's, it becomes a simple meditation to, ah, oh, we're, we're doing this. And I removed, just for this exercise, I removed a lot of the complexity that we ordinarily will find in a Taiji form where we can get lost in the complexity and forget about the energy. We forget about mobilizing the chi because we're so we're so caught up in what's next. What do I do now? So by getting that, so this is something you can do anytime. In any moment, you can separate two poles, feel into the stillness, and mobilize your chi. Richard. Um, 
I, I'm, I'm feeling as though now that I'm recognizing the still point, um, it seems as though being with the still point accumulates chi. If I don't appreciate that at this point, I feel like I'm expending my chi if I go past it without recognizing it. Mm. That's, that's a terrific observation. Because it, it is the mindfulness bringing consciousness to the event that creates the energy. So with, if you're not doing that, if you're just kind of going along da, 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 and, and go doing your form, you're, you're getting some benefit without, you know, even if you're not being mindful, but you're getting pennies on the dollar in terms of what you, what you can get in terms in if you bring conscious awareness to these, to these, these, these separations, these uh, isolated, isolating these things and creating these oppositions is what generates the chi. Mm -hmm. Scott. I have to say after doing, just after doing that little bit, I've got this whole body coherence that is just, wow. And it's, <laughs> you know, it's persistent. It's not, you know. That's terrific. Really wow. That's terrific. Yeah. I, I like wow. Wow was good. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Lynn. I'm going to um, break the chain here and say I found this um, to be, did not help my chi because I was thinking, right? I mean, like the, it took out of, I mean, obviously I don't just go along and do my chi, my Tai Chi without being cognizant of the, the, the chi and the movement and the form. But I had a really hard time separating feeling from thinking. And maybe that's cause I wasn't, you know, in a super conscious state uh, or whatever, but I'm, I just, it seems like this, I don't mind stopping, stopping always feels good, but there's something about stopping with this intent that I'm having difficulty with. Okay. Suggestion? Um, well, I, I think it, the, the key was in, in your description of it, you said having trouble separating thinking from feeling because they're two very different parts of the brain that are being involved there. And whenever you're, you're um, caught up in the thinking, then you can't, it, it's difficult to get to that. Whereas the reverse is not necessarily true. If you can consciously feel, then you can awaken that super conscious mode and you're able to think very clearly, even though you're, um, you're feeling at the same time. So it's, so it's a way, it's, I guess it's a way of establishing the foundation of the, of the eye of flesh, which then you can, when you bring the thinking to that, it becomes uh, much clearer. I think that, uh, that'd be one way of, of, of saying it. So what, so, um, go ahead. A way that, that I often um, verbalize that sort of um, moment awareness is, is, in, is in being, right? Being in the moment, just like being there, being with whatever posture or whatever energy or whatever. Um, is that a fair word exchange for feeling? I think that feeling helps us get to that place. I think I, I draw a, a, a big distinction between the two. Okay. Okay. So um, I, think that, I think that by bad. activating the afferent neural network, then it makes the state of being, because it, it accompanies that super consciousness, makes it a whole lot easier to, uh, to get to. So if uh, it's not to say that it's not the only way to get there, people get there other ways as well. But if we want to, you know, 
the state of being is not, um, it's, it's a jump from being to doing at that, at that point. So if you're, if you're in a pure state of being, that's, right. that, that's terrific, you know, and, 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 but if we are say, okay, now what, then we, okay, how do I get to doing from, from pure being? And then it's a, uh, there's a step there, which you have to define for yourself with your own process, how you get there. Whereas if we take it the other way, if we get to feeling first, then the being and doing are just two sides of the same coin. You can go either direction easily if you start with, at least this is my experience, this is the way I'm, I have been, I've been able to formulate it. And this is only in, and you're, you're, you're making me think here. So I'm uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, articulate something which is super subtle. Right. And, you know, is, I think, also an area where you can find lots of exceptions for, for, the, uh, for the process. But I know that if I go to a state of pure being, then, you know, I'm not, I'm not generating energy. I'm just, I'm floating in it, but I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not creating it. I'm not, I'm not, there's, there's no bowstring getting pulled back in that state. Right. right. It's right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the, I guess that, that that's a, a way of putting it. So in Taiji Chuan, we want to, we want to pull back the bowstring. Okay. Nick. Yeah. So I'm wondering while you guys are having this conversation, if, I mean, there wasn't a there isn't a lot of physical challenge in the exercise you just did with the right. with the weight in the leg, but I'm wondering if some in some way the physical aspect of that the is um, getting in the way of of the of the feeling the still poles in opposition thing, which you can do you know just simply separating the hands right or sure. any other kind of you know you set up any other opposition and maybe that might help to get the sense of the feeling versus the being starting with something with less physical challenge to it and then kind of may you know to get familiar with it because i understand the difference you're 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 saying um i'm not sure i could explain it either but but i get it <laughs> and, and i'm just wondering if that difference between feeling and, and being it's easy to to get into that experience of really feeling that with less even less physical challenge not having to worry about the balance or the leg getting tired or anything well, about stuff. feeling i'm talking about mindful feeling right okay that's so anytime you're Entering mindfulness into something, you're using your mind. So we move from pure being into right. using your your eye of eye of mind to make to to focus on something. You're saying, ah, oh, this. So you're saying, anytime we bring mindfulness to something, we are we are using it to focus. So when we're in pure being. We, we're beyond mindfulness at that point. There's just, there's awareness, but you have, uh, you're not focusing on anything. And when you're doing that, then, you know, there's not much, not much matters at that point because you have no mind to make anything matter. So. Okay, so I think my state of being might be an impure state of being. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that far. <laughs> <laughs> So we're, we're really, the, the language is really uh, tricky at this point because we're talking about mm -hmm. really insubstantial stuff here. So, uh, but just in terms of generating energy, if you're not holding poles in opposition, you, there is energy there right. that you're swimming in, but you're not, you're not doing anything with it. And yeah, so with, that makes good sense to me. You know, we're not looking so much to dissolve into the energy as to be able to manipulate it. 
to mm -hmm. work it around, to make stuff happen, right. to you know, yes. stir the pot. So, That's really helpful. Thank you. Good. OK, great. Uh, anybody else before we move forward? Sandy. Yeah, I just wanted to comment. Um, so for me, I, I had to use some elbow gin when we were in that yin posture to, to create the polarity. I think uh -huh. the elbow gin to me really helped me kind of um, see the potential in the, the movement. And then when I was actually doing the punch, I felt like I lost the elbow gin a little bit or it was, I was trying to squeeze, like I was trying to squeeze more as opposed to opening. So I felt like I was almost using the elbow gin to expand and then like squeeze, I guess, was the, was the feeling I got with it. But kind of like what Scott was saying, I felt a fullness when I used the elbow gin to kind of open up that yin position. Do you read my mm -hmm. mind, Sandy? Because <laughs> that's, that's the next thing I want to talk about. So <laughs> you've, <laughs> you've leaped ahead to the next part of the, uh, <laughs> the next topic du jour. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Um, so what I've, uh, so I've tried to, to uh, try to establish that we have this yin yang, what makes it yin, what makes it yang? Is it, are we releasing the qua, creating space there, relaxing into the, 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 uh, the supporting structure, or are we expressing the energy? with a turn, with a turn of the waist. And where this, um, it, it's not a, emphasized a lot anywhere. It's, we, we're, we're told to turn the waist, but that's, that's the young aspect. That's the issuing aspect. And there's not a lot of mention to what you do prior to that turn. And I'm here to emphasize that that is as important, the yin is as important as the yang in this case, and probably in any case. But the, uh, so the other thing, and this gets into what Sandy was just talking about, is activating the elbow yin, which is when do I do that? And it came to I kind of watching myself doing some stuff today. And uh, I said, oh, I do it whenever I establish the yin. So doesn't mean that's the only time I do it, but I definitely do it every time I establish the yin, I reach with my elbows. So when I release the quad, when I spiral down, there is, what that does is it opens up the shoulder joints. So you can think of the shoulder joints as being like their own quad. And so by doing that, you are, you're releasing the quad both in your hip joints and in your shoulder joints, which establishes the yin, which then means that whenever I turn, then I can, use my arms to issue the, uh, the energy. So we're going we're gonna to play with that a second. Just let me make sure people got the idea there, what, what I'm talking about. Mm. OK. It is amazing <laughs> what it does. It, it, Maria and I were playing with it earlier. And just like, just by doing it, even before you even before you turn the waist, it your partner is uprooted just by you know just by establishing that energetic connection because it uh, it by unkinking the hose in your shoulders as well as unkinking the hose in your quad, you are then allowing the energy to gush through you in a uh, in a torrent, 
All right, so let's, uh, let's add that to our little exercise. So begin with your left leg forward. Pick up your, your right heel. So we're in this yang expression. We want to go yin now. So we feel we feel into that still point and feel the elbows. Reach with the elbows, feel the ball, set the knees, spiral down. And as we're turning, you're feeling the elbows. Feel the stillness there. Turn the waist and reach out. Here's your coffee. Feel the, feel the stillness. Feel the elbows spiral down. Feel the stillness, feel the mobilized chi. Feel the bowstring being drawn back. And turn the waist. Go to the other side. Left fist, right leg, pick up your left heel. Feel the stillness, feel the elbows. Spiral down. Feel the poles in opposition. Turn the waist. Feel the stillness. Feel the elbows. Feel the stillness. Turn the waist. Now just do that on your own for a few times. Rick, are you keeping the front foot substantial all the time? Yeah. But you don't have to. You can go to the back foot. We're going to punch from the back foot now. Left foot. So this could be a, a back weighted punch. Pick up your the heel of your front leg. Feel the stillness. Feel the elbows. Spiral down to the left. Feel the stillness and then turn for your turn to waist and reach. Do it again. This is your back leg. Uh, go to the other side. Back foot. Feel the stillness. Feel the elbows. Spiral down. Yin. Turn the waist, yang. Feel the stillness, yin. Yang. Now do it quicker. See if you can pick up, do it a little faster to see if you can find those points even though you're speeding it up a little bit. Okay, go to the other side. So by picking it up to speed, you're starting to bring more awareness to those elbows like, oh, okay. And they, 
that's just a, a thing that you start to do. It becomes in a super conscious state, it becomes much easier to find your elbows just because it feels good. It feels right. It feels juicy when you do that. Okay. Any questions on that or comments? Trying to keep it real simple here. So this is something you can apply to any anything you're doing and bring a whole lot of juju into, uh, into whatever it is you're doing. All good? Scott? I actually felt with that exercise, it was too many variables and I started to think too much. Okay. I guess I just need practice. So, you know, slow down and, and uh, you know, to practice it. So it's just as an introduction to, to what else is possible on this. Okay, anybody else? All right, let's take it. Oh, Sandy. Yeah, I just felt like I want to hit a punching bag right now. I've got so much energy. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's juicy. It's juicy. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do, let's take it to a, uh, a move out of a Taiji form. Let's do a, uh, uh, a very simple cloud hands type posture and, and feel into that. So what we're gonna be doing is feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral right, turn left, and then right ball, set the right knee, turn Spiral left, turn right. So that's going to be, this is going to be the action here, right? This, this sort of thing. But it's every step of the way, it's initiated by that awareness of the stillness going into the yin, going into the yang, going into the yin, going into the yang. And we, the arms will as you can see in this one here, there's a yin and a yang, right, each time. So what makes it yin or yang? The qua. So let's take it. So start, feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, good. Feel the stillness, feel the elbows. Spiral down to the right, releasing into the qua, so you're, you're, you're getting yin. So feel that loading up. You're getting very soon in your qua. You're feeling those elbows and then you turn and reach out as you turn. Now you feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. You're feeling into the stillness here, feel the elbows. Spiral down to the left. As you feel into that, you're getting yin, feeling the elbows, and then you turn. The whole body turns, the elbow stays in the same position with the body as you do that. And reach. And feel into the stillness. And feel the left ball, set the left knee, feel the elbows. Spiral down to the right and turn, turn the waist. And reach and feel into the stillness there. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, feel the elbows. Spiral down to the left. Loading up the right qual, feeling the yin. Turn the waist. Notice the, stop just for a moment, just feel into, notice that your elbows, if you got it right, they are still in the same position regarding your body. 
they're not like this, they're not like this, right? They are holding that same position as you turn. Stillness, elbows, spiral down and yin and turn, yang. Stillness, right ball, set the right knee, feel the elbows, turn. So here, when you reach for that elbow, you're pulling, your body is pulling that right arm across. You're not pushing out with the uh, shoulder, you're being, the elbow is being pulled by the turn of the body, the turn of the waist. Left ball set the left knee, feel the stillness, feel the elbows and turn. And continue. See if you can feel into that sequence, do it nice and slow. So it requires some thinking until you don't have to think. Just like any new learned skill. down and feel it that feel your elbows feel the stillness allow your release your claw They're very soon So in the classic, they talk about the chi must be excited and excitable. Master Yang would say that the chi must fight. So what is at peace, what is at stillness is your mind your spirit, that's at peace. Whereas your body, you know, the, the classic talk about that, it should be like a cat ready to pounce or a, uh, a hawk coming out of the sky after its prey. There is that sense of excitement in your chi and we learn we can learn how to do it without thinking because we get to that that state in the superconscious where we've already integrated the activity so much that it becomes very easy to do without thinking but to get to that place, you do have to think. And step in, take a deep breath, and disappear the chi, dissolve it. And you're doing is feel the elbows as you're going down, feel the energy just out through your feet, disappearing, moving into the emptiness. And 
Okay, grab a seat. Rick. Uh, you did it again. The Chi crowd went crazy. <laughs> you, they, you were yelling at me, you've opened up a new wing of the rave club. <laughs> the electricity going through the fingers, the arms, and even other parts was a whole new experience. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks. Good. I think this is big. I think it's uh, it's exciting. It's putting a bunch of pieces together that takes it to a new level. Richard. Um, I had a real, uh, you, know, you know, sometimes as we're doing this, you find a little piece or a posture or a movement that really sort of resonates with you is like, oh, that's what this is. And today, as we were doing the wave hands, I noticed it was very, uh, very dramatic that when I would lower one arm, if I would allow, if my, I would let my elbow collapse, it was like putting a pin in a balloon. <laughs> so it's helping train me to keep my elbow gin to, to uh, keep me, keep me full. Um, Cause I have a, I have a strong feeling of that. So it's going to help me keep my elbows, um, uh, engaged that's that's terrific and the uh you know kudos to you for having that energy sensitivity because we want to get to that point where oh this isn't right whenever we whenever the 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 train jumps the track so we we recognize it whenever you know oh something where, where to go where'd the g go you know, and you want to be able to have that feeling, have that awareness, because then you can then immediately rectify the situation. What did I drop out? What did I drop? Out? Oh, I didn't feel my elbows. Yeah. Cool. Are you reaching your hand there, Jonathan? Oh, you're just you're just feeling your chi. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, anybody else? Stan. Uh, Rick, uh, I was rereading re that uh, blog you put out for stillness, and you uh, mentioned a book. Uh, I can't think of the title quite right now, except about the pendulum. And part of it is when it was mentioned about the uh, zero point. Uh, it sounded, it seemed like I almost understood what was being said there. I got interested in reading the book, but I can't seem to find it. Is it still out? Stalking the Wild Pendulum by Itzhak Ben. That's right, yes. Uh, you can probably find a PDF of it online for free. Oh. If you can't, if you can't find it, it should be available, but uh, I've actually, I think I actually picked up a, a PDF. You know, I couldn't find my copy, so I just went, went online and, and did a search for it and you know it's the whole book is oh. there in a uh, in a pdf form so if you're um uh, uh, you could go there and and check that out if you can't if you can't find the book but it's a it's a it's a, an important read i think uh to um you know really be, be familiar with with uh, that uh his perspective which is he's, he's a funny guy too so he's, he's it's a lot uh -huh. of the fun book Yes, thank you. Yes, that, uh, I may not get the pl planks constant, but uh, I can't quite uh, see the uh, minus three power to the minus 33, but that's besides the point. But it did seem like it's very interesting. Thank you. Now, it takes practice to get down to that uh, uh, minus 33. Minus yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> You got to work on that one a little while. Uh, I Scott, think so. I uh, came uh, across uh, low numbers in the math that I did, but somehow I think I missed this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like zero point. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> Scott, you got something. 
Oh, I just wanted to say that uh, I just actually started reading it, and it was, you know, it's available on Kindle. And okay. if, you have, if you have a smartphone, you can just download the Kindle app and. I know, but I checked Kindle. I couldn't find it. Oh, uh, I just I just bought it like two days ago. It's there. Oh, it's there. It's there. Wow! Because I did a search and. Stalking the wild pendulum? Did you get stalking? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try it again because for me that would be convenient. Thick. So for those of us, you know, who like pages to turn, um, there's a great site everybody should know about, alibris.com. Check the chat. It's there. It's online. It's available in used copies Great. Mm. Well, as well. Very yeah. good. Okay, anybody else? All right, so um, let's do one more one more exercise using that uh, that idea. So let's take it into uh, let's do that spiraling exercise that we did a, a few weeks ago. The um, You remember we uh, right foot forward, we coming around like this, right? So, but we're going to do it nice and slow so we can break it down into the into those pieces. So begin with your weight in your left leg. Find your central equilibrium, your three pillars, get everything going here, and so feel. Feel the stillness, feel the elbows, and spiral down to the, uh, actually go ahead and feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee, put, push your right knee out, set that, and feel those elbows, and spiral down to the left. And as you're reaching out with your right arm, you rotate the forearm so the palm is up. Feeling those elbows. And then turn the waist and rotate the forearm. Whole body turns using that elbow chin. Your weight is about 70% in your right leg now. So now you're going to feel the ball of your left foot. Set the left knee, feel those elbows. Feel the stillness and spiral down to the right into your left leg and rotate your forearm, right hand. So as you're, you're reaching out with the left hand, your right hand comes down. Feel the stillness there and you're gonna make a transition to from yin to yang and turn, rotate the left forearm, feel the stillness, feel the elbows, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, reach out with the left hand, with the right hand, Rotate palm up, left hand comes down. Turn the waist, going from yin to yang. Feel the stillness, feel the poles in opposition. Feel the elbows, left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Left arm rotates, reaches out, right hand comes down. Feel that still the stillness again. We're transitioning now from yin to yang. And turn the waist. Feel that opening, feel the poles in opposition. Good, step back. Step forward with your left foot. Weights in the back leg, the right leg. Feel the stillness, feel the elbows. Spiral down to the right. 
Left hand rotates, reaches out. Feel the stillness. Yin to yang, turn, rotate, stillness. Feel the elbows. Right ball, set the, uh, oh, I, I should have shifted my weight for it. Okay, we're gonna do it with the, in the back leg now. Feel the ball, the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the left. Rotate your right arm, reach up, feel the stillness, feel the elbows and then turn the waist. Step in and deep breath and disappear the chi. And just pause and feel into the stillness, feel into the emptiness, feel into the space between thoughts. Okay. Cool. Any, uh, <laughs> any uh, parting words, any thoughts, questions? Lynn. So now that I'm started really feeling this. Does it seem crazy to seem, it feels like I'm feeling it between the two quads, right? That, that you feel that same moment of stillness between the yin qua and the, or the weight, the substantial and the unsubstantial qua. Sounds, sounds great. Uh, the whole, the whole system is going to yeah. start yeah. to connect yeah. up in a way that mm -hmm. is freaky. It's so powerful. It is freaky. And, uh, you know, you, you have to meet, uh, uh, meet us at the punching bag later for <laughs> to uh, go in and, and smack some things around. It, uh, it's a pretty, uh, right, Sandy? <laughs> it, uh, it, it, it really loads you up with vitality. Cool. Okay, anybody else? All right. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. See you. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye.